new spacesuits and the first crew on the Artemis mission in 2024. The Artemis program, NASA's most thrilling mission to date, will be discussed in this video. This space mission represents a huge step forward in human space exploration, not simply another one. By 2024, NASA's Artemis program hopes to send American astronauts, including the first female, to the moon. The objective of the project is to create long-term lunar exploration and use it as a launching pad for manned expeditions to Mars and other planets in the future. In addition to robotic missions, technology advancement, and global collaborations, the program supports human exploration. Not only are flags being planted, but resources and infrastructure that will support sustained human presence on the moon are also being developed. For humanity, the Artemis program is essential. A new era of space exploration and colonization has begun. We will be able to conduct scientific study, create new technologies, gather resources, and eventually colonize other planets if we can establish a long-lasting human presence on the moon. What would you do if you were to walk on the moon that you thought was absolutely insane? Please share in the comments section below. Whatever the case, NASA's effort is a critical step in creating a future where our planet is safer, creating new economic opportunities, and motivating future generations of scientists and astronauts. The crewed flight test of SLS and Orion on Artemis II in 2023 will mark the start of human exploration under the Artemis program. Recently, information on the crew and the Artemis III crew members' spacesuits was made public. What qualifications does an astronaut need? Soon I'll introduce you to the team, but first, do you even understand what it takes to become an astronaut for NASA? Let's go back to that year 1959. Because one required to fit in the Mercury spacecraft at the time, becoming an astronaut used to be restricted to military people who were shorter than 5 feet 11 inches. Thankfully, things have changed since then and following drill sergeant commands is no longer necessary to become an astronaut. Now that NASA has changed its qualifications, anyone with a master's degree in a STEM discipline is eligible to apply. That's correct, as long as you have a degree in science, technology, engineering, or mathematics, you are qualified to apply, regardless of whether you have a PhD in underwater basket weaving. However, there's still more. Additionally, you'll need to have 1,000 hours of pilot-in-command experience on a jet aircraft or at least two years of relevant professional experience. It's similar to the job application from hell, but at least there's a spacesuit waiting at the end of the road. If you're fortunate enough to get through the application stage, you'll need to pass a physical examination that's more difficult than winning a gymnastics gold medal. The examination confirms your fitness for trips to the lunar south pole and Mars, which require long duration flights. You will undergo two years of rigorous training at NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston after being chosen. Everything from spacewalking to controlling T-38 jet aircraft will be covered. It's similar to going to college, except with better toys and zero gravity. As you can see, the military's top echelons are no longer the only ones eligible to become astronauts. Anybody with a STEM degree and relevant expertise is eligible to apply. There has never been a better moment to apply with NASA's intentions to build outposts on the moon and Mars. You might be the first person to set foot on Mars or unearth an alien race. The sky is no longer the limit, so start studying and honing your astronaut techniques. The team. And now that we are aware of the requirements for becoming an astronaut, allow me to present you to the four superhuman members of the Artemis II mission team. The spectacular spacewalker Christina Hammock Koch is first up. She's had 328 days in space, so she has the stamina to handle any difficulty. She is also the first woman to successfully complete an all-female spacewalk, which qualifies her to break down any gender boundaries on the moon. Gregory Wiseman, the scientific superpower, is next. He has conducted experiments in space for more than 165 days, thus he is intelligent enough to handle any issue. 
Additionally, he is a social media whiz, making him the ideal choice for connecting with Earthlings and informing them about the mission. The courageous pilot of the Dragon is Victor J. Glover. He is qualified to pilot any spacecraft, including the Crew Dragon. As someone who has recently returned from a six-month stay on the International Space Station, he is also an expert at long-duration missions. He is prepared to handle anything the moon throws at him thanks to his experience. Jeremy Hansen, the outstanding Canadian astronaut, comes in last but not least. In addition to becoming the first Canadian to travel to the moon, he has the academic and research expertise to support him. He is the ideal candidate to make fresh discoveries on the lunar surface because of his distinctive perspective. These four superheroes work as the ideal Artemis II team. They are the most qualified individuals to take on any challenge the moon has in store for them because to their strength, intelligence, courage, and distinctive perspectives. Artemis II Mission the Artemis II mission, which is scheduled to launch in November 2024, will push the boundaries of space exploration and showcase NASA's expertise in space technology. They will spend around a day performing system checks in Earth orbit before the crew sets course for the moon. This will provide as beneficial preparation for other docking maneuvers required in upcoming missions. The orbit of the spacecraft will be extremely elliptical, with a range of 115 to 46,000 miles above the planet's surface. Artemis II will use a number of lunar destination burns and course modifications to establish a so-called free return trajectory, but will not orbit the moon or make a landing there. The craft will be able to return to Earth even if an engine fails thanks to this approach, which will bring it within 6,400 miles of the moon's far side. This project represents an amazing achievement in space engineering because the free return trajectory will create a figure eight around Earth and the Moon. This mission will mark an important milestone in human scientific progress in addition to serving as a demonstration of technology advancement. The four crew members will testify to the Moon's awesome power and how it has inspired humanity throughout the ages. Despite the fact that the mission does not feature a lunar landing, the journey itself serves as a reminder of the limits of human exploration and the limitless potential of space. Around 10 days are anticipated for the duration of Artemis II, during which the crew will carry out experiments and collect information that will be crucial for further missions. The spacecraft will be able to take beautiful pictures of the moon and shed light on its geology and features thanks to the free return route. This incredible expedition is expected to make significant advancements and push the limits of space exploration. This mission is well positioned to attract people's attention and show the incredible potential of human achievement because to its creative use of trajectories and course modifications. It serves as a reminder of the endless possibilities of space and the boundless potential of human creativity as we look to the future. Modern Spacesuits However, that's not it. The primary objective of the Artemis program, as we've already mentioned, is to set foot on the moon. Christina, Victor, Jeremy, and Grigory won't go near the moon's surface. Instead, they'll just pass it by and gaze at it. However, a different team of astronauts will investigate some areas of the moon close to the lunar south pole. These will be moonwalkers, and Axiom Space will lend them specialized spacesuits. But why are special spacesuits even necessary for lunar astronauts in the first place? In reality, it's quite straightforward. Because there isn't any oxygen on the moon, an astronaut would be unable to breathe without a spacesuit. And that's not all. The moon's surface is also littered with various hazards that may hurt an astronaut, such as rocks, dust, and extremely high or low temperatures that can be equivalent to those found in Antarctica or boiling water. Fortunately, NASA has chosen Axiom Space to create the most advanced spacesuits for the Artemis III mission. Astronauts exploring the moon will have the most mobility, comfort, and safety with these new spacesuits. They will also feature the most recent technology and fit a variety of body types. This is crucial because even the smallest rip or flaw in a spacesuit could have detrimental effects on the astronaut wearing it. 
along with designing, developing, producing, and certifying the spacesuits, Axiom Space is also in charge of ensuring that the astronauts are properly prepared and have access to all the tools they need to safely complete their spacewalks on the moon. It's not an easy job, let me tell you that. Axiom Space and NASA partnered, but why? In other words, by employing a commercial services contract, NASA not only supports American employees and exemplifies technical ingenuity, but they also encourage Axiom Space to seek out additional commercial clients for their moonwalking services, which contributes to the development of a burgeoning space economy. So let's cross our fingers and pray that everything goes as planned so that the first woman and the first person of color step foot on the moon very soon, and who knows, perhaps you'll be able to perform a moonwalk one day as well. Alright everyone here is where the video ends, thanks for watching, and see you again soon.